Yeah. In 1975, Steven Sasson created the first digital camera, which in a New York Times article titled Kodak's Digital Moment, written by James Esker on August 12, 2015, was described as a Rube Goldberg device with a lens scavenged from a used Super 8 movie camera, a portable digital cassette recorder, 16 nickel cadmium batteries, an analog digital converter, and several dozen circuits, all wired together on half a dozen circuits. So my first camera, fast forward about 30 to 40 years later, I got when I was seven years old, as well as my two brothers who are all a year older than me. My mom decided to give us all the same silver, battery-operated Canon camera in hopes that we would get into photography. We all really enjoyed using it, and personally, I started taking a lot of pictures of my cats, and that kind of led me to become interested in um, portrait photography. And as I grew older, kind of in the day of the Facebook age where people were having like photo shoots for their profile pictures, I was always a designated photographer. And that led me to kind of start actually focusing on it and making it one of my like main hobbies. So I became very interested in photography. I actually went on to be the photo editor of my yearbook. And I also did a four week intensive program at Parsons School of Design in New York City. And I also interned in New York City the next year with the designer as her social media kind of like representative. So I took photos of everything that she needed and posted it and wrote about it. So that's kind of been like my main thing growing up. So since I was seven up until now, I really have like seriously just grown to love photography so much. So basically what I'm going to be teaching you guys is how to properly take a photograph, like a portrait photograph, because obviously for landscape, it's different, you kind of have to have a different layout or whatever, but there's a lot of rules when actually capturing someone's face to make it so that you can capture kind of the emotion behind it, the background, because there can be so many things going on beyond the photograph, but what you're kind of focusing on is the person themselves and making them look their best. So step one is you have to turn your camera on. So this is my Nikon D3200. It has been through a lot, but it seriously is like my, my favorite thing that I own. So basically, <coughs> right here, turn the camera on. This flashes. And then number two, look into the lens. So this is where you look into, and it basically, this is what's capturing everything that you're seeing in here. So when you look into the lens, the first thing you need to do is use the rule of thirds to center your image. So in Digital Photography School article, written by Darren Rouse, the rule of thirds is described as being the theory that if you place points of interest in the intersections or along the lines, that your photo becomes more balanced and will enable a view of the image to interact with it more naturally. So basically, if you think of your picture in like three things, you want your image centered, and then everything on the other sides kind of just pulling it all together. So basically, you'll look in, see like, this one actually has like a little graph that goes on it that actually splits the screen into three so that you could really like focus on what you're taking a picture of. And then number three is to zoom in or out. So this is just a zoom, depending on how close you want your photograph to be, what you want to be in your photograph. Step four, press halfway down to focus. So halfway down on the photo, on the little button that you would use to actually take the picture and that little beep means that you're focusing on something. And then, focusing creates depth of field, and in a Photography Life article titled Understanding Depth of Field, written on December 19th, 2016, depth of field was described as the distance between the closest and farthest objects in a photo that appears acceptably sharp. It's kind of what creates the like blurry effect behind what you're focusing on, so it's very important to have like a good focus. And then step five, press all the way down to take a picture. So, I'm gonna demonstrate, obviously, halfway down and then just take it and then you've got yourself a photo of the class so basically becoming a good photographer does not take lessons rather it takes a lot of personal practice to find your own unique style my favorite photographer Patrick DeMarchelier stated in an article from Vogue written by Katie Barrington titled Patrick DeMarchelier that he has no formal qualifications just the school of life 
I learn most by just taking pictures, a lot of pictures. I've made plenty of mistakes, but it's often from your mistakes that you learn most. Being a photographer is like being an athlete. You must practice every day. So basically, through my experiences and through all the years that I've spent learning photography, I, and all of the opportunities that I've gotten, I've come to the conclusion that I I'm a pretty good photographer, and that the way that I've gotten to this point is by taking photos every day, whether it's on this camera, my phone, and that's basically how I've gotten to where I am.